Because I have been preparing for exams and just generally being busy, I haven't had that much time to write, so I'm just waiting till after exams so I can continue writing and reading a lot more. But I have been reading a little bit, and obviously when you're busy and you don't have much time to commit to certain books, you kind of just want something that's easy and fun and most likely happy, or at least I do. So these are some books that I thought are actually pretty good to read when you're busy because I've been reading them when I'm busy and it hasn't been too much of a problem. <laughs> so, right, the first one I have is on my Kindle and I don't know whether you'll be able to see the cover because I don't know how to get to it really. As it turns out I can't get to the cover. Lots of people who watch booktube videos know about Jennifer L. Arm Trans Obsidian series and I want to talk about them still because they're like, if you were into Twilight when Twilight came out and do you remember how happy and not actually stressful those books were? Like, they were pretty much fine, except for New Moon when you had a bit of like... <sighs> but they are pretty, like, easygoing in comparison to other things. And they're fun and they're romantic and they've got a lead character, man person, who's quite snarky. It's like that. Just good fun, especially the first one, because as with most first books, you're just kind of getting into it. Nothing's too serious yet. It's all pretty much happy, it's all pretty chill, nobody's dead, and yeah, it's not too emotionally wearing. <laughs> so those are really good fun to read and they're really quick and they kind of read like a contemporary but with a little bit of supernatural alienness sprinkled in, but it's really good and you should read them whether you're busy or not. <laughs> Next we have a childhood favourite of mine and that's Percy Jackson or any book by Rick Riordan. Right, these books are so funny. If you have any interest in Greek mythology or just kind of casual fantasy, like what's it called when it's like half normal, half fantasy? It's one of those. And it's just good fun. Percy's really fun and adorable in the first book he's 12 but doesn't really, it doesn't read exactly like a children's book, it just doesn't have like swearing or intense violence or sex or swearing or I've said swearing twice but that's not the point. But anything like that, it's mostly just good fun. Yeah, it's just good. Lots of people already read this too, but it's still good to read when you're busy. Because I'm reading, am I reading? I'm reading Trials of Apollo at the moment, that's written by Rick Ryden. And I would probably recommend that you read Percy Jackson and all the heroes of Olympus before you read Trials of Apollo because you miss out and there are spoilers, I think. There's one particular spoiler that I can think of, but spoilers! So read these, and if you're busy, this won't be too wearing. Is this the key word? It's like learning words. This is the word I'm going to use repeatedly throughout the video. <laughs> Next we have one which is one that I read recently because the second book was coming out and I wanted to refresh the memory. Why is this refresh? I don't know. But I wanted to refresh my memory on the story and it's just a good book to reread. And that is The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee. I have heard her, name, her last name say, said various different ways. However, lots of people have heard this as well. It's a retelling of A Thousand and One Nights and that's the story where the king has a new wife every day and he kills her the next morning and nobody knows why and it kind of reads in a bit of a fairy tale kind of vibe. A bit like Harry Potter, so sort of it would be well read aloud. It's that kind of story and the magic is pretty simple and easy to get to grips with and nothing too complicated happens and it's in a different kind of culture to the ones you normally see in fantasy or contemporary. It's still, it's just really good. <laughs> and so then I read the second book recently which is The Rose and the Dagger. I really enjoyed the second book as well. I imagine the second one would be less enjoyable to reread because the first book is kind of a falling in love, that kind of thing. Whereas the second one is much more plot orientated. However, still very, very good and I really enjoyed them. Next we have one that I technically haven't read yet, but that's not the point. It's Bridget Jones. This one is The Edge of Reason. And I've only read the first one, but it's just fun and ridiculous. It's told in a diary form. It's really easy to read. It's not too much plot heavy stuff going on. It's just a fun contemporary. And finally, we have Anything by Stephanie Perkins. I was going to say Stephanie Meyer, but that's not what we were talking about. Seventy Perkins. These books are the most adorable things with some kind of substance. Like, they're, they're not just empty 
reads, they're good. And they're really rereadable because I think you forget how much there is in this story. These books will save you from that pit of despair you get in when you're doing A-levels. It's just, they will. They have to. If these don't do it, I don't know what will. Buffy. Buffy will. <laughs> I love Buffy so much. Also, I meant to mention earlier, Obsidian Lux series. Jennifer L. Armentrout is, I think, rewriting the whole series from Damon's perspective, which is a bit of a cop-out, but they're fun. It's like reading Obsidian for the first time, again, and it's just fun. I mean, if you get the Kindle version, I don't know about the actual paper copy version, then you should get the first three books. I don't know about paperback, but definitely with ebook. Five pounds for three books. Thank you for watching. I hope I'll go back to talking about writing soon. However, I thought I'd just do this. Alright, see you later.